Hello Gibson fans, this is Jim Deeming, uh, fingerstyle instructor for jamplay.com and I want to talk to you today a little bit about one of my favorite Gibson guitars that I'm holding in my hands right now. Um, this is a solid body classical guitar that's called the CEC. This one happens to be the Chet Atkins signature model that uh, they came out with for several years. Um, there's also Epiphone varieties of this same guitar and um, it's a really fun guitar to play. I love the way it sounds um, but there are some things that you can learn about this guitar that will help you uh, play it better, enjoy it more, and get a better sound out of it. And I want to just go over a, a couple of brief things with you on that. Um, first of all, it is designated as a classical guitar. This uh, CEC has the full 2 inch with nut up here, like a true classical guitar. There's also the CE version, which I believe has an, uh, a 1 and 13 16 inch nut down here, a little bit narrower. But again, it's the, the solid body uh, classical guitar with nylon strings. And the first thing to know right off the bat is about string choice on these guitars. Uh, you're probably not going to have too much luck if you just go down and buy a standard uh, set of classical guitar strings that you would put on a normal hollow body acoustic classical. And you really want to look for something called a hard or high tension uh, nylon string. And I, sometimes when I'm talking to students I find out that they're surprised to learn that those even exist. Um, but they do. I think this is a, a generic brand. I'm not even sure who this is made by, but it does specifically say high tension, um, classical. Uh, this is a set that I like, and uh, this is not a paid endorsement. I just happen to like these, made by GS, GHS. It's a signature series by Doyle Dykes, and these are also hard enough tension. In fact, that's what I have on the guitar right now. Um, they are flexible. They're still very easy to play but I think that the tension that those strings uh, have allows you to get away with, with a substantially lower action um, that most of these guitars are set up with compared to, again, the traditional classical guitar. So that's one thing. Everything else, uh, as far as strings goes, is pretty much um, standard or traditional. The strings tie on on this end like they do on a regular classical guitar. Uh, the peg heads wind the same way a classical guitar does. But there is one other detail that's pretty important to pay attention to, and that's what I want to focus on today. Um, you do have a tone and volume knob up here externally, but that's not the only control you have over the sound of this guitar. And what I want to show you is just a little peek inside uh, the guitar on the back side. And what, what I'm going to show you is the controls for the pickups. Um, there are actually six individual pickups underneath each, each string and each one of those is individually uh, controllable. There's an individual uh, pot, we call it, right? Uh, volume control for each one of those. And I'm going to show you where they're at and then talk briefly about the way that I've personally had the best luck uh, getting them set up. Uh, I played this guitar without doing that for quite a while after I got it. I've had this guitar since uh, about 1990 and uh, I waited way too long to make this adjustment and it wasn't really until I got in the studio to where it really started to drive me crazy and the basic issue was that the sustain on particularly the lower uh, three strings is pretty dramatic and if you don't uh, get that under control uh, volume wise um, you almost can't do enough palm muting to keep that under control and balance it out with the treble strings. So bear with me just a minute, we're going to pop the cover off and uh, I'll show you what that looks like and, and talk through how to set it. Um, this, this access plate back here has four Phillips head screws and take those out to get the cover plate off. And again, as I said, this is a solid body guitar, so this is really just a, a routed out hole in the back. Um, the rest of the wood is solid. Once you get this plate open, it helps to have fingernails that you aren't afraid to break. I'm going to try to be careful with the fingernails on my right hand. Let's just use gravity. There we go. So this is the cover plate with a grounding shield on it. And there is also a yellow wire that is intended to lay out here and contact that grounding shield. Uh, this is a guitar that you do want to pay attention to having the grounding done as good as possible or it will make some noise in the amps. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out uh, that I learned the hard way is the Velcro that is used to hold this 9 volt battery in is, is uh, military grade super strong and if you just dive in there with your fingers and, and try to pry that off 
it you'll have to build up enough pressure that when it lets go it lets go hard and so what I've learned to do is to take a screwdriver and just kind of tuck it in and ease that battery off of that velcro it saves you a soldering job later the wires that come off of this battery are pretty small and uh, we don't want to break those okay so now with the battery out of the way uh, you can see the electronics in here and in particular what we want is these three wheels here and each one of those goes to one of the six uh, pickups and if I remember correctly I believe that the one with the black wire down here on the lower end of this the black wire goes to your uh, sixth string the lowest string and on the other end the red wire goes to the pot that controls your first string and they are in order so by spinning that wheel you can control individually the output of each each individual strings pick up. Now having said that there's a couple of different thoughts on what's the right way to go. If you are uh, used to or working with guys that are used to playing with uh, electric guitars with uh, passive pickups there's a school of thought that you should on the front of the guitar turn the volume and all the tone knobs all the way up and let the sound guy deal with with the output from the guitar and uh, having dealt with a sound guy like that playing this guitar when he kept insisting that I turn this guitar all the way up I didn't produce a very good sound since this is an active pickup um, what I find works the best is to actually go to the other end of the spectrum to have this 9 volt battery doing as little work as possible putting out the sound and, and let a preamp or the sound system pick it up and boost it from there so with that thought in mind what I do is start with the uh, loudest string, the one that's the hardest control, which is the sixth string. I'll take that pot and turn it all the way down. It will not turn it off. You'll still be able to hear it. But if you set that string all the way to the lowest possible setting and then balance the remaining strings to that string, I think you'll have a pretty good sound. And you'll also find that uh, as you work your way up in pitch with each string, you'll be pushing them just a little bit farther on the wheel. Now the way to get this right, um, I was fortunate enough to actually do this operation in a sound studio that had a nice system I could plug into with a meter, a signal strength meter, and so what we did is we actually played the sixth string on the lowest setting, marked where it was hitting, and then adjusted every other string where, as good as I possibly could imitate, a similar uh, strike on the string, we were getting the same signal strength. So to the best of my ability, all six of those strings are balanced out to the same. That may not be what you want if you uh, if you find that you have a harder attack uh, either with fingers or thumbs you may need to adjust accordingly to get it to sound right but I've been pretty happy with that. Um, there's another school of thought which is to uh, turn the highest one, the, the first string pickup, volume all the way up and then back the rest of them down to balance out with that. You could do that, I suppose, but again, um, it's been my experience that also on the main volume control of this guitar, anything much over 50% uh, trying to drive the volume out of this guitar, I start to get uh, unhappy with the sound that it's producing. Again, I'd rather have the guitar preamp not working so hard and putting out a really good clean sound and put another preamp, maybe a, a Bags makes a paracoustic DI box, or maybe you like the Aphex uh, exciter. There's several different good preamp boxes that will uh, really make a good sound coming out of this guitar. I just like to try to not to not to drive the big power with that little 9 volt battery and the very small electronics that are in this guitar. Give that a shot. Um, another point of reference for this guitar if you have more questions is the uh, Chet Atkins website uh, forum. There's a lot of guys out there that know uh, an awful lot about this guitar and as I said, there's still a lot of them in circulation, and uh, they're readily available and a lot of fun to play. And I hope what we've gone over today helps you enjoy yours more. Thanks a lot for watching.